Hi, and welcome to the second episode of the Advanced Intellect Community YouTube channel. As you already know, this channel has been established for us to put our thought leadership uh, people in front of you. Um, at the same time, reach out to our customers and uh, get some really interesting interviews for you. But today we thought we'd uh, give you a little bit of a deeper dive into our business. We have got three divisions. Um, it's the data analytics division, it's the cyber security division, and of course it's the privacy division. But today I'm joined by our general manager um, of the data analytics division, um, Sean Robenheimer, and I'm also joined with our, joined with our senior solutions manager, Enlin Nivellen. Welcome guys. Morning, Jason, thank you. Morning, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you know, first time round, um, trust me, we're hoping that this is going to go pretty easy. Um, but again, you know, one thing that we realized about live interviews is, uh, you know, we go with the flow. But Sean, I think, you know, just just diving in simply and, and let's let's get the, you know, let's get the idea uh, kicked off. Is a simple question to start is how did advanced data analytics vision come about and and why? So, a good question, Jason. Um, so, you know, I truly believe, you know, in order to understand the DNA of any business, um, you know, you've got to go to the roots of, of where the business has started. Um, and I guess our journey started, um, you know, back in cyber. I think we spent a better part of 15 years protecting customers' data. And I think along the way, we, we realized that although we were able to protect the customers' data, customers were struggling to find real value from that data. Um, and there were two challenges that they had. One is that they didn't know what to collect, so they were collecting everything, um, and certainly definitely not the right data. And the other challenge is they weren't able to collect some of the data at all. So, you know, being in the cyber world, we understood better than anyone, um, you know, unstructured or machine data. Um, and we'd been doing it, you know, sort of unknowing for, for, for a good part of 15 years. So it was a natural transition to, to, to move into the data world and start unpacking what, you know, the challenges that customers were having with, with this type of data. So we call it the three Vs, right? So it's volume. So customers were just, you know, not able to collect the right data or trying to collect too much. Um, you know, the, 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 the variety, which means that they were able to collect structured data, you know, in Excel spreadsheets or CFVs or databases, but they weren't able to collect, you know, machine data or unstructured data. And in velocity, right, um, the, the speed at which customers needed to collect their data was a challenge. So, you know, we sort of branched off um, from advanced, you know, cyber. We created advanced intellect as a business. Um, and we created a specialized division called advanced analytics. And the sole purpose was to help customers make their data accessible, usable, and start adding value in their business. And that's how we started uh, uh, the, the division analytics. Look, I think, it's, I think it's a great journey, right? You know, if, if you and I both know, and, and same with Enlin, we sit in front of customers all day and there's a conversation about doing more with less, reducing budgets. And I think you, you, you touched on a very critical point there is, you know, engaging with customers specifically in the analytics space and the security incident management space, which, you know, we, we all know well, is yep. the first conversation you talk to them about is, you know, again, how we cor correlate this data. And, and then the immediate question thereafter becomes, cost right and, and you touched a really good point there for me which was right data right time right cost right because again uh, you know we see it time and time again everybody's reducing their budgets people's budgets are down 15 20 percent some more so again I, I love what you're saying because that makes a lot more sense customers can go away from your engagement understanding that it's not going to cost them on arm and a leg you guys are going to come in and look at the right data and uh, and deliver value right yeah, 100%. And I think in the data world, right, um, and where we're fortunate enough to have those conversations is, you know, you can actually show them the value of it, right? So rather than saying, look, you need to invest in X um, because, you know, and, and what value do we see? You can actually start seeing the value. Um, people can start seeing efficiencies in the business. People can start seeing additional revenue in the business. Uh, uh, customer experience starts to improve. So, you know, the two divisions really work nice hand in hand. One, you're showing business value, but at the same time, you're protecting that business value with the cyber. So yeah. it, this, the synergies are nice. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Enlin, one of the things for me that, you know, and we hear about all the time is, you know, data. Data is thrown around daily in so, so many ways. Data this, data that, defined data. Why, why the big fuss? 
Well, the, the, the scary thing is uh, data is generated by almost everything around us, you know, and, and data is currently used to support a, a plethora of use cases. You know, they range from home automation, autonomous vehicles, um, online shopping experiences. Even our mobile phones uses so many data points on a day-to-day -day basis. Essentially, you know, um, it's become so embedded that, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives that we, we, we can't live without it. Um, and we're actually starting to take it for granted. Um, a very good example, you know, that I recently discovered myself is, um, you know, the impact my COVID face mask had on my facial recognition system on my iPhone. Um, I had to remove the mask and go through the pain of putting my pin in again, which wastes a huge amount of time. Yeah, it's that um, eye recognition, you know, right? Exactly. <laughs> so you need to see the eyes and the face and the nose to, to actually do the, to, 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 to the correlation. And um, it couldn't. So I... I had to put my pin in again and, you know, it, it gave me, you know, respect again for, you know, the stuff that, that I've taken for granted again, which is, which is, yeah. And, and there's a million use cases like that. It, it doesn't yeah. just stop there. You know, um, data is all around us being generated by everything. So it's, it's, it's really, the fuss is really about the stuff that we've actually started taking for granted. You know, yet there's this big hype about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Look, and I think the thing that I like very much about, you know, the data analytics division at this point in time is the customer referenceability that you've created, you know, in, in the short period of time that the business has been going. And, and really, it's been based on, on that thinking and that methodology, right, which is, which is great. So, so, Sean, I mean, you touched on a, on a couple of points, right? One of the things that, that I think is, is probably a, a good question to ask is, so, so what does the analytics division actually do and, and what business value do you bring? So if you would allow me to share my screen, I'm a big picture person and probably the best way I can explain it very quickly is uh, in a picture format. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen if you let me know when you can see there it. We go. Yeah, we got it. Uh, right, there we go. So if I said to you today, um, take your phone and I want you to delete all your apps on your phone, right? Um, and I want you to switch the internet off. Effectively in your personal life, you've got an old telephone like we used to have back in the day. We used to, you know, do this sort of <laughs> to get to the number. Um, and that's effectively what this device is. Uh, without any internet, without any apps or, or sort of data available to you, you wouldn't be able to operate nowadays, right? In fact, you would leave the house and if you left your phone, you would go back to go get your phone before you would, uh, you know, go to the office. That's how, you know, yeah. sort of it's, it's, it's become part of our lives, right? Yeah. Yet, if you look in the business world, a lot of companies are still operating in this mode, right? Um, you know, and if you go back to our personal lives, right? We have our financial information, we have our health information, we have our stock information, we have communication, we have how to find things on Google Maps. There's an app for an app for an app, right? Yeah. Um, and literally when we wake up in the morning, we spend the first half an hour, 45 minutes, you know, catching up on the world. So we know before we even start the world exactly what's happening in our world, right? Yes. Now imagine you could do that for business, right? Imagine businesses, whether it be the owner, the CEO, the CTO, the IT manager, or just one of the employees in your business that's able to wake up, have that same visibility, whatever it might be. You know, finance needs to understand where the finance is. The CEO needs to understand the health of his business overall. You know, what are those five to 10 things that you want to wake up every morning and be able to have a look at it, whether it be on a screen or dashboard on a phone, and be able to understand where's my business at? What's the health of my business? You know, is there anything I should be aware of? How do I make better decisions based on, on information? And that's what we do in our business. We create a platform, which is effectively the internet, for us to be able to collect the right data points, for us to build out the apps, to give visibility to our customers, to be able to say, where am I going in my business, right? Now, a lot of customers are operating like this, uh, you know, manual spreadsheets uh, that are old, outdated, or they just don't know. And effectively, what we want to help our customers uh, build out is we want to create the phone for them in, in the professional workplace and give them the visibility that they need to do the job to make the right decision. Yeah, look, and I think I think there's we've we've got to talk about you know the elephant in the room, our friend COVID, right? 
how that has changed business. And I think you're very right. If, if it's not financial, looking at how they should look at their services, if it's not manufacturing, if it's not construction, if it's not, you know, everybody's having to look at how do they do more with less, but more importantly, you know, how do they address the challenges that COVID have brought in, but still generate revenue and still be profitable. And let's be honest, I think, I think data is probably one of those points which, which have the capability to do that, right? Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. Inland, so, so like I said, COVID stepped into our world and, it, and it's changed the world for everybody, right? And, and, and mainly businesses and people's earning capability. I mean, history has proven, you know, over, over many, many major events that there is positive, significant acceleration in change, right? And, and we're seeing that. You know, in fact, there's a a statement that everybody talks about today, and that's hustling, right? Because working from home is different. What does that change look like from from your viewpoint and your perspective? Look, I I think while while the circumstances around COVID um, and its impact on economies and and, and people around the world is is truly sad, um, I do believe there's a a silver lining um, in what COVID has done for digital transformation, you know, and and that's, that's but one example. You know, it, is, it has forced us to look at different ways to enable and, and manage people in the workplace, you know, and with that comes a need to, to, to look at data differently, you know, to consume that data. Um, also, how we, we would potentially deliver traditional education, you know, um, the fact that we, the world is finally changing the way they're, they're delivering traditional education. And, and that in itself creates so much opportunities, I, I think, for, for new businesses, you know, people to extend their service offerings and to reach a much wider audience, you know, people that potentially couldn't go to university. Um, you know, can now join it online at a fraction of the cost um, because, you know, the content is, 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 is repeatable and, and it's, it's essentially a copy and paste. So mm-hmm. I think, I think um, you know, the other thing that I'm also quite passionate about, uh, um, what COVID has done is, is, is it's made our impact on the world crystal clear. Um, you know, so I think post COVID, you know, people would be driving clean energy, um, you know, with far greater urgency than they have been till now. Yeah. Um, so all of the above, I think, has been, and that's just to name a few. There's, there's a there's a ton of stuff, um, but all of the above has been fast tracked, you know, um, and it created new opportunities which we would not have seen, um, you know, if it had have not been for COVID. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's to name just a few. There's there's a million things out there that's changed. I fully, fully agree. I think what's happened is is ex, ex, you know acceleration tenfold has, has happened, right? And and I think you're very right. Looking at the advanced business units and and where they sit, those three business units are like you say, you know, we're we're relevant, um, and and it's now become something that people are, are seriously considering. It's not a it's not a five year plan. It's not a ten year plan. It's a you know it's it's, it's now, a 2020 yeah. 21 plan. And, and, and it's got to be executed against. Yeah. Look, I think, I think one of the things that, you know, I've been watching on the side, obviously from, from the cyber side of things is just the team of people that you have managed to build, an amazing amount of people um, that you've managed to pull into the business to date. Can you give us a bit of an you know, understanding about the team, um, the dynamics and, and building out this team that we have, I mean, and you have in, in the, last, the last three years? Yeah, that's something I'm very passionate about, you know, borrowing technology, you know, helping and enabling people and, and, and bringing them into the fold is, 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 is something that's very important to me. I think, you know, first and foremost, our, our people are our business, um, you know, and our hiring philosophy has always been to always been to, to bring great people with great potential into into the fold that will complement our culture. Um, um, interestingly enough, you know, we've been, as you know, been remote workers since, you know, the inception of the organization. So COVID really didn't do you know, or really didn't have an impact on us. Yeah. Um, it didn't stop us to deliver on projects. You know, we've had major product projects running since, you know, the end of last year. Um, we've continued to deliver on those. Um, and we've been doing that while we've maintained our staff morale, you know. Um, so it's pretty much business as usual. But I do believe there's certain things we've done um, that has kind of established this amazing culture we've got. Um, and that's allowed us to to maintain, you know, um, um, what we've been able to, to do so far. You know, we've we've got relatively flat structures, so we welcome yeah. open and frank um, conversations within our business. Um, we first and foremost, and it's something I'm very passionate about, is we manage deliverables, not people. You know, and trust that the people we've hired um, are the best at what they do, and therefore, you know, let them get to it. 
Um, since we've all been remote, I think one of the tricks has been um, and challenges that we've grappled with from from the beginning is, is um, you know, how do we keep people to, you know, to, to engage and to feel part of a team and a community and almost a family. Um, but we've very cleverly use technology to create spaces where people can collaborate in a professional manner. Manner, and if we if we if we need to have some fun, you know, we've created spaces where away from the customers, you know, where you can literally just shoot the breeze and and, and really just have a good time. Um, we do also, you know, like many people in IT, work long hours, um, but we strongly believe in work-life balance. You know, even though the platforms we've got allows us to be connected twenty four seven, you know, um, so if if if, if needed. Um, we also, you know, one thing I believe in is that if, if you're going to pay someone a decent salary and, and you're going to bring them into the fall, you need to give them the right equipment. So yeah. we've given our people state of the art equipment, you know, um, to enable them to do what they need to do. And then lastly, um, something which, which is also very close to, to my heart is we've also invested significantly in people skills. Um, and, and continuous development. Um, someone in, in business once said that we can't afford to train our people um, to uh, can't afford to train our people as they would leave the minute you've done that. The flip side of that is if we don't train them, they may stay. And yeah. that is something I would like to avoid at all costs. So, um, you know, I'd rather have very well educated, happy people, you know, continuously driving us forward than people not willing to, to, to skill up because the world that we live in requires us to continuously learn, continuously evolve. The minute you think you know something, something else is out, you know, it, it just changes so rapidly, especially in the world of data and, and, and cybersecurity. You know, the minute you, you think you know all the answers, they go and change all the questions. And, and well, exactly. Um, I fully agree. And I think, you know, just, just, you know, just for subscribers and people watching, you know, obviously this, this session, you know, one of the things that we're making available and, and you're doing it for your customers as well, right, is creating these knowledge bases, creating the content, uh, to help influence change, right? Because I think you highlighted something that, that for me is resonant is, you know, back in the day and, you know, 21 years ago for me, and I know longer for, for some is, you know, everything was based on a per hour cost, right? And you would bill on a per hour cost. Yeah. I, I liked what you said. You, you spoke about, you know, specifically deliverables. And, and I think yeah. in, in a mantra that we started that, you know, our journey with was outcomes. And, you yeah. know, if you can get customers to change that thinking, you know, wow, um, because then it is, then it's about the time you as a business put in to deliver those outcomes, right? 100%. 100%. Yeah, that's, and, and that's a great model. I think the challenge that, you know, you will have, and I think you've seen it and we've all seen it is people are so used to doing the same thing, um, you know, because all of, you know, all of, uh, all of uh, the, the market charge a per hour cost and, you know, that's yeah. how it works. But, you know, for me, I think leading and thought leading requires that, that approach. And I think today where we are COVID, non-COVID moving into the future, if we're not doing that, right, it's, uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to swim with the rest of the uh, rest of the fish, right? Yeah. So, I think, I think also to add on to that, uh, some of our customers are there, you know, and, and, and you can have that deliverable where there's a cost to the deliverable and it doesn't matter whether you do it in five hours or you do it in 20, you know, and, and I think that's a benefit to the customer and a benefit to us. Yeah. Um, and some other customers, you simply just need to walk the journey with them to get them to that level where, where it makes sense for them. So it comes well, down to trust. The thing. 100%. And I think, Sean, coming back to your app analogy is, you know what, you can go and buy services from Manila for $5 and they can deliver it for you in 10 minutes or 20 hours, right? So, you know, again, that that microservices, flexible uh, strategy, but delivering against the customer's expectations and outcomes is, is critical. So, so Sean, just, just coming back to you, I mean, what, what does the future of data look like, you know, for us as individuals and as business? You've, you've touched on a couple of points, which I think are so pertinent, but I mean, just what, what, do, you, what do you see? What do you think? So data creates technologies and technologies are creating more data. Um, which is a bit of a double-edged sword, but data is only valuable once it becomes information and we turn that information into actionable intelligence. So we've seen that the business that has, have taken this data, transformed it into actionable intelligence, how they're transforming the way that we do business, right? So we're seeing, um, you know, retailers becoming bankers, bankers becoming retailers. We've seen the likes of uh, John Deere and agricultural and Domino's in the food industry becoming technology companies and we've seen the successes and the growth they've had um, you know personally if you look at the health and fitness world um, and the adoption of, of smart watches yeah. you know the, those are, are, are wearables these are devices 
that are collecting data points, giving us the information and allow us to action on that, right? Which has changed the way that we look at the, you know, the way that we train, how we train in sports, um, you know, how far we can push the body. Um, and ultimately, it's around about the customer experience, right? And we've always said that, um, you know, brands are trying to get, you know, the consumer closer to their brands, their products, their services. Um, and what technology has done is bring these two worlds together, right? Um, but for me, the future of data is these worlds are, 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 are probably more collided than ever before, right? And COVID has shown that, right? If you look at it, you know, work used to be work and home used to be home, right? You used to leave work, you used to go home. Those worlds are now collided. At home, you've got your office um, and at work, you've got your, your personal life, right? So, you know, what does it mean for the future? I think virtual reality is a great example of that and, and alluded to it in the educational space. And I, I think moving forward, um, data together with technology is going to allow us to shop online. So we're going to be able to have a look at holiday destinations all around the world before we actually make the booking. Yeah. Um, in real, we're going to be able to sit in university listening to, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the teacher, you know, in reality, we're going to be able to shop for a car, you know, the possibilities are endless, right? So I think the future of data, I think these worlds are going to collide, um, they're going to get closer, and it's how we take advantage of this that is going to decide what sort of the future looks like. Yeah, that's great. And I think, you know, for me, what, what, what it brings down, and you brought in some of the futurist uh, conversation there as well, is, you know, we all grew up watching movies where we had flying cars, talking robots, light speed, space travel. Um, and, you know, and, and that, was, that was always something that we thought, well, you know, it's pie in the sky. You know, in, in some cases, uh, you know, you, you passed, you know, people passed it and, you know, didn't believe it was possible. But now we're talking about self-driving motor vehicles, you know, robots, uh, you know, and again, in, in, in the technology world, we talk about artificial intelligence and all the acronyms that go with that. I mean, you know, one of the examples is, you know, you know, robots out thinking people playing chess, uh, AI machine learning. I mean, these are all buzzwords, right? Um, and, you know, what do they actually mean, Enlin, in, in the real world uh, when, you know, when we just dummy it down and, and have a look at what it, what it delivers? So I think, you know, with the exception of the light speed travel, I, I, I truly think we're pretty much there, right? Um, you know, everything else, you know, you've got Siri, you've got Alexa, you know, they, they're pretty much talking robots. Um, you can have a <clears throat> full-blown conversation with them. But I think if you, if you look at what um, AI and machine learning is doing in the medical world and making sure that, um, you know, cancer is detected more accurately, you know, I think the one thing we as humans, you know, some people resist change, others say they like change, but... Um, it's inevitable that people want to have a variation in their day. They hate mundane, repeat, repeatable things. And I think the opportunity for all of us is that we can now, you know, we, we in certain cases, we can hand off those mundane and repetitive work to machines to do, and they can do it um, with greater accuracy, greater speed than we would ever do, you know, freeing us up from, um, from the stuff that, that we actually don't want to do anymore. You know, it allows us really? to be creative and to think and to build and design and develop. Um, which is, I think, what, what, what we, we, we're there for. Um, there is, you know, there's also at times, I think, negative sentiment around the world with, with a lot of these technologies. I've seen, I've seen a lot of work that Ford, for example, how they're designing cars nowadays using augmented reality, um, you know, and th there's a lot of negative sentiment around AI, like I mentioned before. I do, however, think the one area that I think more should be done in is to make sure that, um, you know, uh, more should be done to make sure that these technologies and, and innovations are done or developed in a um, responsible and ethical manner. Yeah. Um, you know, however, you know, technologies like AI, virtual, augmented reality, it's, it's going to change everything that we do, especially I think the little nudge that COVID gave us in, in certain areas is definitely we're going to see some really interesting stuff in the next 12 to 18 months. Um, and, and with that, it's going to have potential to solve so many of the problems we haven't even thought about. But yeah. in terms of if, 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 if you were into sci-fi movies in the 80s and the 90s, um, you know, you will realize that the future is actually, yeah, you know, we're yeah. not waiting for it to happen anymore. It's, it's yeah. Well, on DSTV, they're showing Back to the Future reruns, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was actually a decent, decent movie, eh? Um, I'm <laughs> 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 
Good job. And Jason, um, Ellen is working on the light speed problem as we speak. Oh, please, Lord, just get me out of always <laughs> traffic, man. That's don't don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, our utility is not, not helping us in that space, but, but all good. Guys, you know what? I think, I think what we've managed to do in this session is, is really touch on some critical points in a very concise manner and give people a, a great view into the journey that you guys have been on and you know, where we are as a business and where we're growing. Sean, is there, is there anything in closing from your side? Well, I think in closing, Jason, is I think we live in a, in a, in a very positive time with a huge amount of opportunities, right? Um, and I think using the right data um, is very powerful. I think it's up to us as individuals and businesses how we use that data that's going to determine our future, right? And I think probably the last statement is the data age is here. Are you ready for it? And Agreed. that's it from our side. Agreed. And, and thank you. And then anything from your side? No, I think, um, you know, it's like anything, you know, like I said before, a lot of people will, will frown upon something like AI or machine learning and say it's bad, you know, it's going to take over the world. Um, and I think as long as we act responsibly and ethically, um, you know, the opportunity to use data for good um, is, is, is there, you know, it, and, and it's all around us. We just need to, 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 to have the, the patience and, and the willingness to see, see those opportunities and be creative about it, to be honest. And I think I want to, I want to bring that back because you, you highlighted something is, it's here to augment people. It's not here to replace people. Okay. And I think the perception, uh, you know, whether, you know, political or otherwise, um, it is all about how do we take those, and you highlighted those roles that, and those things that, that people just don't want to do. And we give them better things to do and augment the things that they, they you know, it can be excited about. And, you know, you highlighted culture, you highlighted human beings and human spirit growing in, in organizations. And imagine that building a culture like you've created where humans can actually build, you know, interpersonally and, and have machine and AI doing the mundane things, which we've seen. And, and by the way, you know, if people don't adopt it, your competitors are going to do it or, our adversaries in the cyber world are already doing it. So you're spot on. And again, guys, thank you. Thank you very much um, to our subscribers. Yeah. Sorry. Ben. No, Sean, you want to say no, something? No, I just said, thank you very much. I, yeah, I really enjoyed you. it. I appreciate it. Anytime. Yeah, thanks, man. We, we, we just, we just had a, a zoom and teams moment, right? <laughs> 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 but just in, just in closing from my side is to our subscribers and to people that are viewing this, is, you know, this channel is dedicated to helping you understand what we're doing as a business. But more importantly, over the next couple of episodes, we're going to introduce you to our cyber business and our privacy business. And then we're going to open the doors to our customers and those people that we're engaging with regularly to give their point of view and how they're helping their organizations change through digital transformation, COVID, um, and adopting new strategies. And I'm looking forward to talking to not only data analytics, our privacy customers, but also our cyber customers to share that information with you. So in closing, subscribe. Um, the information we'll share will not only be able to be used for you through your journey um, in your organizations, but more importantly, utilize the videos to share them with your colleagues and potentially executives to give them some insights. So again, thank you from Data Analytics, uh, from the advanced team. We appreciate your time and uh, look forward to the next episode.